in sports, there's always two elements. There's always skill and luck. And in March Madness, you're essentially trying to predict 18 to 22 year olds in high pressure situations. So <laughs> there's always that certain element too. Every year I present to whichever students I'm teaching, linear algebra, which we've all learned at one time, like x plus y equal five and x minus two y equals six. We apply that to March Madness, where the unknowns are the rating of the team, which determines the ranking of the team. Math Mojo is the idea that you're gonna actually have a computer sift through 5,000 games. You want the math to be able to figure out that the team's gonna play well in March Madness, that they're primed to play well, and we often call that finding the mathematical mojo. On the website, you'll see that there are two different methods. One is called the Coley method. That looks only at wins and losses. And then there's the Massey method, which looks at differences in scores. And you really wanna try both methods because it depends year to year in terms of the parity of the teams, which one will work the best. The way that the algorithm works is that it's, because of the linear algebra, in order for me to know my rate I have to know who I beat. So it actually folds in strength of schedule. So that means that it's not enough just to win. I have to be beating good teams. For instance, Kentucky is undefeated. And so you'd think that they're just going to be at the top no matter what you do. That actually is not the case. We usually predict a lot of upsets, particularly in the first round. We usually are, it's very unlikely that our methods are not in the 90th percentile, 95th percentile, beating 90 to 95 percent of anywhere from 5 to 11 million brackets on ESPN. We believe that when two teams play each other in different styles, that if you can't stick to the style that you have and play well, then they have an advantage, even though if you look tr just at scores and results, it would appear that this is a weaker team, but not when they play each other. And we often see that on TV when you go, I don't know what our problem is with them. Well, part of it sometimes, I think, is that you've just hit that matchup that you struggle with. And so in my classes at Davidson, it's actually often not the sports fan who does the best. It's people who talk to their friends, kind of have them look at it, see what they think, but then they actually let the math decide rather than these strong feelings that they have for sports.